This episode of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine was made possible by contributions from slaves like you. Thank you very much. Our country was founded on the principles that all men are created with equal rights and obligations to defend themselves from tyranny. For without the consent of the governed, there can be no government. There is no higher authority than our own good judgment and common sense. And this consent is the privilege of every citizen to give and their inalienable right to take away, not just every four years, but whenever oppression threatens liberty. The cost of freedom has always been high and Americans have always paid it with our bounty and our blood. But what have we been asked to sacrifice in this new global war on terror? Freedom itself. It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine. The latest news from the global civil war. I am your host, The Stimulator, and in September 2010, people the world over were standing up and revolting against the slave masters. In the Brazilian city of Sao Paulo, ghetto dwellers brought the fight to the pigs because of continued neglect by the government. The so-called rulers of Sao Paulo were slow to react to a fire that destroyed 300 homes in the Real Parque Favela and peeps had to let motherfuckers know. In all Europe, the civil war took the motherfucking resistance to several cities to let the lubricated horse cocks up top realize that peeps are not going to take the austerity measures and bank bailout sitting down. Over 100,000 workers invaded the streets of Brussels in a massive show of force. The Belgians joined the millions of people who see the cuts as punishing the working class for a financial clusterfuck that they didn't create. In Dublin, the motherfucking resistance rammed a cement truck against the gates of the Irish Parliament, locking the giant government ball sack hours before the sellouts were about to meet. The truck had the words toxic bank and all politicians must be sacked <laughs> emblazoned in large letters in response to the Irish government's disastrous bailout of the Anglo-Irish bank. Do you think that today's, this morning's um, action would be just basically uh, demonstrating that the people of Ireland feel like they're taking it in the arse for the banks? I think one person, one person has driven a lorry up to the gate of the parliament here. Obviously that particular person must be very frustrated, must be very upset at something. Taking it to the next level, the Spanish launched a general strike that kept half the workforce at home. Thousands reclaimed the streets in several cities, including Madrid. In Barcelona, the motherfucking resistance did fierce battle with La Policia and set pig mobiles on fire. Shattering the soul called social peace. Windows getting smashed live on TV. 20 tennis here, confront the beast. Reclaim the streets, fuck the police. Bringing that fire is a city area. Cause they locking down streets with the military. And the progress is death in the cemetery. Yep, the global civil war is gaining strength as the capitalist economy continues its flaccid decline, like when Hugh Hefner runs out of Viagra. Obama and his cronies are tightening their grip by rounding up anyone who speaks against the empire. This is why the motherfucking FBI went on a fishing expedition and raided the homes of activists in Chicago and Minneapolis, claiming that they were looking for connections between the FARC guerrillas in Colombia and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, both considered terrorist groups by the US government. The activists were not arrested, but all kinds of personal shit was confiscated and our peeps are forced to appear before a grand jury later this month. They will not only try to stop any kind of dissent, they will create evidence. They will coerce witnesses. They will rig the jury. And finally, wait a minute, wait a minute, rewind that shit. Just what the fuck is a grand jury? Listen, Jim, I did a little boning up. <laughs> I had a talk with a Mr. Harcourt. He's somewhat of an authority on grand jury proceedings. The grand jury is a tool of the motherfucking pigs to coerce information out of defendants. If you get asked to appear before a grand jury, your lawyer cannot go with you. I'll have to ask you to step inside. The grand jury's waiting. I can't go in there with you. You're my lawyer. I didn't make the rules. I have to stay out here. It's just you, the prosecutor, the jury, and your wits. And finally, director James Cameron went on a little tour of the motherfucking tar sands. After, he gave a press conference 
alongside members of the First Nations affected by the world's most destructive project. Personally, I, I believe that this, this is an, an, an incredible resource because it's the, the singest, single largest uh, reserve of potential crude oil uh, next to Saudi Arabia. And in an energy-starved future, that's going to be a, a, a piece that's going to really uh, put Canada in a different position and, and help with energy independence in, in North America from OPEC oil and all that sort of thing. Yep, Cameron unexpectedly became an oil industry apologist and spoke, quote, pragmatically, end quote, about the need for North American energy independence. I wonder what the Navi will have done if the capitalists try to exploit Tarsons in Pandora. Back in 2000, two brave young men torched three trucks at a dealership in Eugene, Oregon to help bring awareness to the crisis of global warming. No one was hurt in the attack, but the arsonists were handed heavy sentences and were labeled terrorists by the media. One of these freedom fighters recently got out of jail after spending nine and a half fucking years in the clink. So please give a warm welcome to Jeffrey Lewis to the fucking show. Hey Jeff, how the fuck are you? I am pretty fucking well. Jeffrey Lewis. Why the fuck do you do it? We're in the sixth mass extinction. The, you know, the first extinction ever caused by the activities of one species. And in the U.S., the emissions of vehicles account for the second largest pollutants in greenhouse categories. So I decided to go after a dealership that was focused solely on selling vehicles to corporations. In fact, the fleet of vehicles that we targeted, um, a few of the cars that were repaired were sold to Bank of America and a couple other banks. So basically, we saw them as a legitimate target to try to bring our point across and to create dialogue and discussion about how cars and our society and capitalism and our foreign policy on oil contributes to all kinds of environmental and human injustices. Do you regret seeing those polluting puke machines burn? Oh, God, no. No, no, no. No no regrets at all. I would do it all over again, knowing everything I know. But for so many different reasons, um, I think that the state made a tactical error when it sentenced me the way that it did. I think that had they sentenced me to five years, like they did to Critter, um, had they downplayed what we had done is not a major concern, um, they wouldn't have created what they did with my support by giving me 22 years. They gave me a international voice that I wouldn't have had before. And that alone was worth the price that I paid. Some people say that prisons are the front line of the motherfucking resistance. Do you think that to be true? No, I don't believe that at all. I think that uh, we have good people that end up in prison for doing righteous things. And I think that there are people in prison that are there because society has no place for them or because our civilization needs the prison industrial complex to function. And they're capable of good things. But the front lines of the revolution are the people watching this. They're the people who are at home 
knowing that something needs to be done and not doing it yet. Because until those people actually do something, until people are inspired and motivated to act on their desires and what they know to be right, we can't have change. And so seeing as how that's so critical and focal, I would say that's the front lines right there. Jeffrey Lures, are you a terrorist? No, I'm not a terrorist. They say that because they want to give you an enemy to focus on while they hide behind their happy face mask. They try to pretend that the real bad guys are the people out there that are trying to resist. I want to actually read you a quote from a uh, Department of Security Homeland document that's about eco-terrorism. And this is precisely why they crack down on us. It says, the general perception that the planet is in peril and the reluctance or even outright refusal of some parts of the U.S. government to acknowledge the damaging effects of global warming is likely to play into the hands of extreme environmental and animal rights activists and groups. Individuals sympathetic to their ideology or those generally concerned with the welfare of the environment may become increasingly tempted or willing to abandon the customary methods of political dissent. So in other words, the state's actually concerned that through its own inaction on climate change, it might create resistance. So rather than act in their own words on the general perception that the planet is in peril, the state would rather target people who care and call them terrorists because it's easier than dealing with the problem. Darren Thurston, one of the peeps who got rounded up in the Operation Backfire, lives in my city and some peeps are split on his presence in the scene. What do you have to say about that? I don't associate with people who cooperate with the state, period. Um, I try not. There, there are certain people that I, I won't judge their actions because I won't hold them to the caliber of expectations that I would hold other people. But here's, here's the thing, um, and this is really personal for me. I did a lot of years, and I would have walked had I opened my mouth. I never would have done a day in prison had I opened my mouth, and they tried. They tried a lot. They even tried to get me and Critter to turn on each other at the same time. It was so fucking hilarious. Um, and I've had friends that have been subpoenaed to grand juries and been grand jury resistors and refused to answer the simplest of questions because that is where it begins. Those grand juries are the very beginning of the targeting of our friends, family, community members, and warriors. And if we participate in just that minuscule little thing, then we might not only be helping the state capture people, but at the very least, we're justifying their oppression by participating in it. And you take Darren Thurston, who did more than that. He provided information that led to the convictions of more people. That is not someone you allow in an activist community. That is a regular, everyday civilian who participates in the capitalist system willingly and knowingly that supports the state because that's what their actions have shown us. I'm sorry, but the state's my enemy and capitalism is my enemy. And someone who cooperates with my enemy against my community, against my movement, and against this resistance is a piece of fucking shit. Thanks, Jeff. And that about does it for this edition of It's the End of the World as we know it and I feel fine. Many thanks to the wage servants who sacrificed their sweat to allow me to keep talking shit. James, Audrey, Joel, Michael, Jim, Harris, Amy, Diane, Jason, Sakura, Whip, Christopher, Samantha, Rodney, James, Dan, Kara, Lindsay, Brian, Stanford, and Ryan. <laughs> to comment on the <laughs> Thanks to the Jimmy <laughs> story. <laughs> my fucking website. <laughs> Stimmy. <laughs> 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 Kids, you can podcast high quality video of this show at submedia.tv.